Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, as you can probably tell from the title of the video, we are going to be doing the Steph Bora. I'm sorry if I've just butchered her last name, but we are going to be doing the book tag that she has created that is currently making its round on booktube. So without further ado, let's get into it. So the first book is a book that you tell people is your favourite. And for me, that is Donna Tartt's The Secret History. I know that this is a book that a lot of people genuinely do really enjoy but i also know that some people have picked it up and thought uh not for me i am a sucker for dark academia and when i read this book it was like the winter time so the ambiance of my general surrounding slash environment really fitted in well with this i appreciate that it's quite a long and deep book however i really enjoy the characters in here i really like that they are also privileged but also so neglected at the same time that was just uh, i just really enjoyed the character depth yeah this is this is the book that if someone said to me what's your favorite book i will happily say the secret history by donna tart so the second question is your guilty pleasure book and for me that is addicted to you i am currently about to read book three i'm waiting till i go on holiday to get that i don't know i feel like it's really well loved by a lot of people however i also know that a lot of people don't think it's that great that it's just like a smutty book but i love it and i will die on this hill so the addicted series follows lily and lo and then the callaway sister series follows daisy and oh my gosh what's the other sister daisy and rose and then their respective love interests but I know it's, it's very smutty but I really enjoy it and genuinely the plot's really good and it's like found family and honestly I get that when people do like it they hype the f out of this book because it's so worth it so worth it okay number three is a book everybody loved but you didn't and I have been very vocal about this that I actually kind of feel bad but um I absolutely just did not like how to clear family by bella mackie i mean i love the cover of this don't get me wrong i just couldn't get around to it and i even listened to the audiobook just to see if it would switch it up a little bit i just couldn't get into it i feel like the plot was just not the idea was better than the execution is what i'm trying to say and yeah i just this was like a one star for me but i do understand that um a lot of people rated this very highly so again it's just a personal preference and my personal preference was like i not this book this is not my preferred book but um yeah how to cook family okay so number four is the book that you read the fastest and i feel like this was the case for a lot of people and it was verity by colleen hoover i read this in two nights but it was like work night so literally I had to put it down because I had to, but every chance that I got to pick it up, I did. So I technically read it in like 24 hours. The other thing was that I lent it to my little sister and she's not really whatever this genre is. She's not, she's not really into that genre, but she messaged me at 4 a.m. being like, so I started Verity at 11 thinking, oh, I'm just gonna read a few chapters and she just couldn't stop and just basically binged through it and then afterwards we spoke to my mum about this book and we were like you should read it because my mum loves a good thriller and she also read it in one sitting so I feel like out of three people who have quite different tastes in like literature in general the fact that we all read this basically in one sitting says that you can talk shit about Colleen Hoover as much as you want but this one really hit like I'm sorry it did so whatever okay number five a book that deserved more hype and you know what I will say it is When in Rome by Sarah Adams this kind of kick-started my love for just cheesy little rom-coms this was a small town romance a grumpy sunshine it was famous person famous one of them is famous trope whatever forced proximity um it oh, i just i just really loved it and i just thought it was so cute but i don't see a lot of people talk about when in rome i see more people talk about cheat sheet which i haven't read yet but i never felt like i wanted to pick up the cheat sheet until i read this book and now i'm like hopefully the cheat sheet entertains me as much as when in rome does this honestly if you just want like a cozy cute not too much drama you like there's a little bit of drama in terms of like family tensions but it's not deep 
really in that sense and yeah i hope you guys give this a go because i really enjoyed this okay number six is a book that's becoming a tv show slash movie that you're most excited about this is the only book in this um tag that i actually haven't read yet because i'm saving it for when i go on holiday next week or next week or the week after um but it is a taylor jenkins read one true loves i know that simu lu is going to be playing the character of sam and do you know what the people that they've casted for jesse and sam is his name Sam? Yeah, it is Sam. But I love Simu Liu, I really do. I am so excited because I haven't read this yet and I do want to read it before I see the movie just because I want to know the ending. And people have been so good, I'm going to jinx it now, but people have been so good on social media where when they talk about this book, they talk about the premise of, you know, the husband, what happens to him and then, you know, the, like the whole thing, but nobody actually has said what happens at the end and i'm so grateful for that because i feel like that would ruin everything and i want to experience that for myself but i am so excited to see this become a full movie okay number seven is the book that you have reread the most and it is and you will see by the condition that this is a pure fact but it is a walk to remember by nicholas sparks like first of all um this poor thing I bought in the Philippines when I was, okay, I had this thing where I put my like name on books when I bought it and then I would put like the year that I bought it and it was 2006, it is now 2023. So you do the maths because I can't figure it out right now. I reread this a lot because I first of all loved Mandy Moore growing up, Mandy Moore was the one for me and then the song, um, Someday we'll know. Nicholas Sparks was so good, was so good. Before Colleen Hoover, for Taylor Jenkins Reid, it was Nicholas Sparks for me. And this was my favorite. And this, actually, this is my favorite Nicholas Sparks book. So yeah, walk to remember. Okay, number eight, a book from a genre that you don't typically read. And that would be The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I don't really read fantasy anything that's kind of like fantasy and i know this is like greek mythology rather than like full-blown fantasy but i'm like a thriller contemporary fiction kind of gal and this was kind of out of my comfort zone but i will die for this book anybody who wants to talk shit about the song of achilles say it to my face and means you're probably gonna have a fight because the song of achilles is a beautiful book. I don't care what any of you say, it is a beautiful book. And if you don't think so, you're lying. But in all seriousness, I just absolutely love this book and the romance between Patroclus and Achilles and just the the writing style, everything about it, everything about it. I cried. I absolutely bawled my eyes out. And yeah, I just think it's a beautiful book. And I think that because of this book, I have been more susceptible, susceptible? I've been more open to reading more Greek mythology slash fantasy books. So yeah. So number nine is a book that deserves all the hype and that is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. Like, first of all, amazing cover. Second of all, just amazing book in, in all seriousness. This was such a great book. I gave this one a five stars because the plot was great. The unlikable characters was great and just, I don't know, maybe because I'm Asian and it talks a lot about representation. Um, I feel like it just hit so close and I don't know, you don't see that very often, that kind of representation, but this is a beautiful book and I highly, highly recommend that you pick this up if you haven't yet, but you're probably, you know, I'm sure you've, you've heard of this because everybody was like blah, 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 last year about this book, but yeah. Okay, book that you usually give as a recommendation, and that is the only non-fiction in this um, tag, but that is Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. As you can see, I just, I recommend this literally, I say to everybody, but I usually recommend it to my friends. So I feel like if you grew up in like the 2000s and you're like in your late 20s, early 30s, this is going to really, really hit for you, especially if you grew up in England, because there was so many bits in here that I was like, did I write that? And also like, oh my gosh, I thought I was the only one. It was, 
crazy, but the amount of lessons and things that I highlighted in this book was ridiculous. I think this is the first time I properly tabbed something in a sense that I had a specific color for each um, like bit. So I had one for life, love, friendship, and womanhood. And honestly, I cannot recommend this book enough. I literally wish I could buy every single person in my life who I think would benefit from reading this a copy. But if you haven't read this yet, please do give it a go. But it is Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. So number 11 is a book with your favorite character. And I don't know if I would say that she's like the top, my favorite character, because like we can kind of bring in like the Harry Potter card in here but um i'm gonna say evelyn hugo from the seven husbands of evelyn hugo i really want to reread this book because i read this quite early on last year literally like this time last year but i absolutely love her character development and i just love everything about evelyn hugo to be completely honest with you need i say more like evelyn hugo okay a book that you wish you could live in i was really conflicted because i didn't want to like what's it called use the same book for more than one of the questions and the previous one where it was like book with your favorite character i could have actually said daisy jones but when i saw that the next question was book you wish you could live in i thought okay that makes more sense because i wouldn't say daisy is my favorite character evan hugo i definitely like more but i definitely wish i could live in the time of daisy jones and six there is something about the 70s that always always makes me feel like I, it's, it's just so fascinating I love the music I love the fashion and the fact that it's like Los Angeles in the 70s where that kind of music was booming that's the kind of world that I wanted to to jump into so Daisy Jones and Six okay book 13 a book that you thought you would hate but loved it was Convenient Store Women by Sayaka Murata. I didn't really know what to expect from this book. Even kind of like halfway through, I was like, oh my God, what is this book? And then when I finished it, I was so conflicted that I couldn't, genuinely couldn't figure out if I loved it or if I hated it. And then as time went on, I realized I actually really enjoyed it. And I ended up buying more of her books because I don't know, I just, I just really enjoyed, I don't know, just, I just really enjoyed it, okay? I'm sorry. If you fancy a book that's a little bit weird, a little bit quirky, and it's just about a woman and her everyday life, which is so mundane, I'm not really selling it that great, but genuinely give this a go. So, okay, last two questions, which actually funnily enough features like my two favorite books that isn't The Secret History. So a book that made you cry, um, probably me and everybody else who has ever been in contact with this book, but that is This Big Boy, a Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. Now, I want to preempt this bit to say that for everybody who's watching, um, definitely please, please do look up trigger warnings for this book. This is a book that I would never recommend to anybody. Like, I just couldn't recommend it unless I felt like that person had the emotional strength that is required for this book. And you could laugh, you could laugh, but genuinely this book absolutely ripped my heart to pieces. And I think lit, like everybody who's read this book will say the same, but it is just sad basically from page one to the last page. And I, I genuinely hyperventilated crying to this to this book. And that's not me trying to be dramatic. Genuinely, that's how much I felt for the characters here. But this was just a roller coaster of different levels of sadness. There wasn't really any like, oh, okay. Like if there was, I was kind of like, Oof, I can't enjoy myself too much because I feel like something's about to happen. Um, but yes, a book that made me cry is definitely A Little Life. I actually am going to see the play with a bunch of um, people that I met through Bookstagram and we're all going, but we're all not like, re a lot of them are sitting close to each other. But by the time I booked a ticket, I there wasn't really any good seats from where they were. So I'm literally sitting at the front of the dress circle, I'm pretty sure, at the front in the middle by myself. I, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to go, but um, that is next weekend. So we will see. I will keep you guys updated. And last but not least is a book that you wish you could read again for the first time. I'll say it once. I'll say it twice. And I will say it as much as I need to. But Bunny, like all hail, honestly, because this book is so 
flipping weird and I still don't know what I understand from it and every time I deep it I think of different um kind of like under like I, I understand it differently and I still don't really know what's going on and Mona Awad hasn't really clarified any of this so everything is just speculation at this point because it could literally go from like mental health to like it's fantasy it's this it's literally just so many things that it could be and I didn't think that a book would stick with me as long as this has in a sense of you know like your favorite books you think about them like i think about a little life a lot i think about um tomorrow and tomorrow a lot i think about the secret history a lot but this i don't just have like a passing thought i genuinely like just sit there and think about what was that book ab like what was it about what was it about um and to this day i don't know but i love it and i gave it five stars so i definitely wish i could read this again for the first time because i remember the roller coaster that this had me in but i'm definitely going to be rereading this soon probably like in the autumn time so that is the Steph Borrow book tag. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.